Hi, I'm Molly Cheshire, and this is Meetings with Remarkable People. Tonight's guest is Jamie Morgan, and he's just had a uh, film released at the Tribeca Film Festival. And welcome to the show. And it's a controversial film, I would say, about uh, a lot of people that we both know pretty well. Mm -hmm. And just tell us a little bit about what got you interested in making the film in the first place. Uh, the thing that interested me was that I wanted to make a film that really related to myself and the things that I was interested in. Because to make a film, it takes a lot of a lot of time and a lot of a lot of your your life. So I definitely wanted to work with something that intrigued me. And uh, I had no idea from the beginning what, what what I had no specific intention of what this film was going to be when I first started. I went to the workshop. Yeah. I went to the workshop to experience the workshop myself. Well, why don't you tell people which workshop it is or was or, or uh, and what it's all about, kind of? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Ryan could do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Ryan, why don't you tell us what it's all about? That, that is a very big subject matter. Well, because what's fascinating, too, is, is that um, it appears to be about one thing, and it's mm. really about something else. And as Alan would say, it's not about the sex, you know, and it looks like... Well, let me, let me say, at the beginning of the film, I the voiceover goes, my name is Jamie Morgan. I've had a safe and happy childhood, but as I grew up, I realized that the world wasn't what I thought it was. And I felt that I wanted to explore other possibilities and so I'm going to the most radical self-help workshop in the world run by a man called Paul Lowe and that's what it is it's a very radical workshop and why do you think it's radical it's radical because uh, Paul challenges you to look at your patterns of behavior and to look at who you are underneath your conditioning and to tear down your the boundaries that you use to protect yourself and to really take challenge yourself to look at look at who you are underneath all that conditioning and all your fake behavior and, and and this is a good thing well i think a lot of people walk around asleep you know we have our we have our clothes and we have our image and we have the way that we want the world to see us and you know we hide who we really are, so it's a challenge to see who we are underneath all that. And if you're living in your truth, you have a better chance to to be happy and express yourself properly. Exactly. I mean, that that was my motivation for going to the workshops. Is mm. that I wasn't happy, and mm. and I was trying to shed a lot of things you're talking about. Mm. But mm. Um, so, how did you? Meet Paul. I mean, did, did Ryan bring you in? Yeah, I met I met Ryan. Ryan brings in everybody. <laughs> I met I'm Ryan doing yoga, and we just started talking about things, and I, you know, questioning things. And he said, "You should come and meet this guy, Paul." And uh, I went to one of his evenings, and uh, I decided to go to the workshop and and bring my camera along, just to see whether. Yeah, but you had come to a few workshops yeah, before I, before you brought the camera. Yeah, I had built, I had started to do Paul's work, and. The, the decision to make a film was, I hadn't actually decided to make a film, I decided to take my camera. I see. And to film the process, and to film my experience, and Ryan's experience, and Laurel, and three or four other people that I knew who were going, to film their experience through the workshop, and to record it, to document it. And when I came home from, from that experience, I had 70 hours worth of film. Wow. And uh, I put 20 minutes together and I showed it to a producer and he said it looks like you got a, something interesting here and he uh, paid for me to continue the edit and see what happened to the film and two years later it's it's become a film and it was premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival last night which is far greater achievement than I ever thought it would be I thought it would end up being showed to a few people in the groups or it's ripped apart by a few people in the groups well, that, 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 that has happened well, I know and, uh, that you know another member of the group tried to do a film, and mm. uh, it, I don't know what ever happened to it, but it never seemed to see the light of day. You know, it's a very, very difficult subject matter to film because it's 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 an exper an experiential experience. You, you, the workshop is about experiencing. It's about living in the moment. It's about. It's not about 
this kind of thing. So to film that and try and get that on film, it was a very challenging thing for me. I, I tell you, one of the things that I could see the progression, mm. for example, um, in Brian, you know, mm. he, at the beginning of the film, he looks kind of unhappy. Mm. And then at the end of it, he looks different. Mm. I mean, he's the one that mm. looks the most different. I mean, mm. he gets most improved, and, and Ryan, you get most exposed. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, well, one of the things. One of the things that I find amazing is you. You see, just just at the end of the film, uh, Jamie interviews myself and a, a few other people in the movie, and the difference between us a year later, back in London, mm. living in, mm. and the, the aliveness of. Of, of, mm. of, of ourselves in, 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 within the group, in that mm. context, just blossoming completely. Um, yeah, it's extraordinary. I mean, I, I guess this is kind of one of the things that annoys me about not being able to live my entire w life as a workshop, is, is that exactly, you know, you, you do three weeks or, or a month or whatever, and you just feel like you can take the world on, and then it starts to fade yeah. when you get I, back. I've made it my life mission to try and create a workshop all the time. But doesn't that just create a lot of turmoil in your life? Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I noticed at the end of it that it said that you and Maddie are no longer together. And that's yeah. not what I was thinking as I was watching the film. In fact, I was thinking that you were not going to have a girlfriend when you came back from the workshop mm. and that you guys were going to you know live happily ever after in sort of an open relationship including people and you know but do, uh, does your audience know what the works the con right, wait, the let's, workshop is about? let's explain a little bit about what the film uh why, why don't you explain um okay uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you could talk about the workshop and well, why don't you just talk about, about your film. experience mm. Um, I mean, what's it like to be on camera, full frontal nudity, you know, for an extended period of time? I mean, that's pretty dramatic. It was, it's been okay up until this point. And then last night we watched it with 450 people in the theater, strangers that I didn't know. And it was nerve wracking. It was really... Um, but I mean, what, okay, okay, let's, let's take this back to the workshop. Okay, we're here present now, right? Yeah. Why is it nerve-wracking? Is that is that your uh, ego? Is that your identity? I mean, absolutely. Uh, and and it, attachment. Yeah. Yes. To image. Yes. <laughs> I mean, just, just what, this is what just, we're just, trying to shed. It, it was it was a moment in, a, a moment in my life when when a lot happened for me. I I felt all those same feelings as I watched the movie, and it was uh, very personal, very intimate stuff coming up. And all of these strangers who can just casually sort of make judgments about um, what they see on camera and me and everybody else, and it just, it's exposing. So, so it's the judgment that's the most unnerving? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, the do judgment. you think that's because you judge yourself? I wouldn't change it at all. I'm not I, saying I'm I not... would. But, but yes, absolutely. I'm just playing devil's advocate the, here. Because the... it, it just always cracks me up that, you know, I've, I've been doing poll for five years, and Michael James was doing it 14, and I don't know how many years you've gone to poll. But, you know, it, it seems like, you know, come on. We, we, I wish I could grow up, you know what I mean, in, in a way. And, and, oh, yeah. but, but then I just have to accept where I am now. I, I feel okay about if I feel nervous that that That's I'm okay. all right to be nervous. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was courageous. I mean, you guys really put it all out there, and I mean, I know that a lot. Of, I mean, there's a lot of controversy about this mm. film, and mm. and uh, and I mean, I was really impressed, Ryan, that that you really put it all out. Mm. I mean, you did. In anyone else that you had to cut out of the film of all the seventy hours? Yeah, yeah, I had. Uh... Out of the hundred people, there were four or five people that categorically didn't want anything to do with it. After they'd already given you tacit approval no, uh, and sort of done interviews and things like that? No, there was various various different levels. From the word go, there was a few people that were, don't film me, I don't want anything to do with this. Right. And then there were people who just allowed me to film. But like I said, I went there to film, I went there to do the workshop and I filmed it. And it was only after spending a year editing this thing that I realized that there was a movie mm. and that people were interested in distributing it. So 
when I sh when I sent it to Tribeca, it was oh, I'm just going to send it to this festival. And when I got the, f the phone call back saying we want to premiere your movie with Tribeca, I was like, oh, you know, it's suddenly it's a movie, right? And I had to be very go go back to him and said, you know, we've got a film here and and double check releases. And that's when people's stuff started to really come up because it had been a year later. Right. So they were very open in, in interviewing. Yeah, they're all, they're all, they're all expansive yeah, they're and Harvard and love and everything. And then it's like. And then suddenly it's like, oh my God, this is going to be seen by people. And so. The, and not just people. Like, you could rent it, you know, like your, you could, yeah. your mother could and go out and slow it down <laughs> and kind of really look at that moment where someone is completely open and emotional. I mean, and there was some very revealing moments yeah you know like in the in the ladies locker room yeah and i was like i mean she didn't have a problem with that being shown she hasn't seen it oh she hasn't seen no. it. no so this is what this, i mean that's a real but sharon she, but she has given her consent yes she's right. given her consent yeah. see what it is is a lot of people from all over the world so I couldn't show anybody until I'd finished the movie. Right. So what I'm, what can I do? Send people bits of footage. So I had to go. Uh, people had to trust me, and I had to say, "This is the, my intention around this right. film. Will you let me put you in it?" And a lot of people said yes. And not not. I mean, and of course, it, it's my interpretation. You know, I've I've got the cut. I can do what I like. Right. With it. So. What's actually happening now, there are some people are having very reactive responses about the choices I've well, made within the film. Somebody tried to sue you yeah. and, and, and tried to get it prevented from being shown. And yeah. frankly, he didn't even... He comes across so well, I think he's Yeah, he's sweet. so sweet. And he, what, what happens is it... He doesn't even like expose himself. He hasn't seen it. Oh, he hasn't seen no, it. No, and what it is, is it triggers his fear I see. of what's going on in his life. So. And this is what happens: is a lot of people have projected fear, so they. What's the matter? Have you completely messed up? No, it's great. I was thinking he's going to be even more upset. Well, no, I mean, for me, it's been a complete giant, giant. Well, and it's going to continue. This is what's yeah, the fascinating yeah. thing. I mean, I've had a lot it's... of very aggressive hate mail t emails towards me around this. But uh, why? Because people feel that I've taken the liberty them. of using their using their their image to create something for myself, and this wasn't done for myself. But but I mean, couldn't you blur them out? I mean, I noticed there uh, were a few blurred yeah. faces. But you know, the the, the the what has happened that people have given me their permission, and so I've put them in. And right. now that when it comes to it, they're changing their minds. Now, unfortunately, I don't. The film, for instance, is is out there in traffic, right. so I can't go back and re-edit at this point. So, well, you can re-edit after the festival. Well, I can, but it takes a lot of money. Oh, well, that's true. So you know, I built this film on the permissions of the people I was given. Mm. So now they're changing their mind. What is the moral code for that for me? Do I go? Oh, well, now you've changed your mind. I'll, well, I'll take. New so I'll take. I'll <laughs> take you out. So I have to go back and spend. I don't know. I don't have the money. Yeah. My producers who gave me the money to hand the finished film said to me, "Have you got permission?" So I go, "Yes." Here's the film, and I can't go back now and say, "Well, now I want to take out that well, guy, maybe, that guy, that guy," because they're being reactive. So I, I think maybe it's a very you, you difficult can take, situation for me. Well, if you put up, them, if you raise the money to re-edit, then we'll take you out, and they can. They, maybe they can start like a class action kind yeah. of re-edit. Yeah. You know, thing. I don't know. You know, I mean. I, yeah. I mean, this to me is is very interesting stuff. Yeah, you it's know. a lot of stuff coming up for people around this. But uh, I mean, I, I like the film. I mean, there, there's certain things that I, mean, I I I think it could have been a little lighter. You know, I mean, that's funny. You should say a lot of people say that it you know wasn't deep enough, profound enough. And the reason why I I, I made it in a style that. I, that was, I think, quite cool, and the music, and quite modern, and for people that don't want to sit there and watch a motivational video, right. and that watch MTV and watch no, watch normal stuff out there, and I wanted to appeal to those kind of people to see, so it has that kind of attitude, and then underneath is the message and stuff, and so I didn't want to do a promotional video for Paul Lowe. No. That was the last thing Paul Lowe wanted. So I wanted to do a film about people about this about a journey about journeys of self-discovery about emotion and, and all these things and within that there is a, a lot of a lot of message and a lot of profound oh, stuff absolutely. you know uh, 
that was the idea and hopefully it comes across so to a lot of people that everybody has a well, different no, no, take I, it was it was merely that I, I i felt like you took yourself a little seriously oh that's funny do you think i took myself yeah, seriously yeah, yeah, yeah. wow <laughs> <laughs> that's great uh, well i don't i don't know i mean right because i, I wait, 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 what do you mean what, yeah, no, you were just you always just seem kind of gloom and doom you know i mean like oh i'm here and i'm going through my stuff and, and mm. I, I don't know i mean i was just like you know Oh, Jamie, this just looks like I was, he was like, also tortured. rapping, and he was. No, no, you were having a little bit of fun. Yeah. But, um, but I mean, I, I guess mm. my experience with you in the workshop mm. was much different, you know, because mm. you were very funny, mm. and, and not just in a performance kind of way, because mm. you got that funny thing going too. Mm. And I don't know, maybe this was just your serious workshop, or, or I, I don't know. No, I, I think you see, it wasn't just about me. You see, I had my journey. I, I, I'm in a way the narrator, right. and I'm one of the main protagonists. And that wasn't my, it wasn't my choice. I didn't go there to make a film about myself. Like I said, I went to make a film about the journey uh, through the workshop of everybody, about the workshop. Right. But as I started to cut it, it, it started to realize that it was about these particular people and myself included but also i had to incorporate a general experience of what it's like right. about paul's work the intensity so i couldn't i didn't want to gloss it over no, or, or make it a very yeah. light hearted i'm a very light hearted person but there are a lot of people that were going through a lot of very very heavy stuff and myself included so i was trying to get a balance between humor and and also the the dark stuff i mean as paul says to me you know i was in the dark night of the soul yeah. i went through some very very deep dark stuff uh to get through to the other side and i think you, you got to go there and uh, i i we all had to go there and it is a dark place you know when you start taking away all the tricks that you've been using, all the little games of your personality, all the clothes, all the little tricks you use in your life to fool people into liking you, you take that away and you're left with what? And that what is, is, can be a very painful place because it is actually not what you thought it was. You are not what you think you are when you take away your, your tricks, you know. Yeah, it's it's terrifying. Yeah, it is terrifying. And, uh, I mean, as I always said, you know, everyone says, uh, "Well, I, I don't know if I could take off all my clothes." I'm like, taking off your clothes is the easy, easy part. part. <laughs> yeah. But like I said in the film, like Paul said, the, the clothes are your is the first layer, and it's like it's like peeling onions. That's layer one, and layer right. two is your little personality yeah. tricks. To I was about to say, yeah, yeah. And then, and then what layers, what other layers? Well, it goes on and on and on. And I mean, I don't know how far I got, but I certainly got to a place where I feel that I've changed and that I look at the world in a different place personally. And I take a lot more responsibility. I don't blame people. I, I don't get, I don't get angry at them. Even when the lot of the anger that I've had around this has been very intense and people being abusive to me and normally I would retaliate with right. anger and I haven't I have just I realized it's their stuff and I've allowed them to do what they needed to do and that's very different for me so I, what, do, what blessed, do you do you know. when, when people attack you I don't do anything well but, <laughs> and that, that's actually well, the trick last well, night someone attacked him and he broke down actually that's true I was there yeah in the car yeah when the attack when, happened, when the attack happened. Yeah. And, and then I looked at the movie and I couldn't, for the life yeah. of me, see what she was talking about. It's their stuff, you see. And normally, what's been happening for me over this is I've had two years of people attacking me around this. Well, actually a year, the last year. And generally, I I just take it. And, and then, but when it comes from a friend, like it did the other night, so close to me, that it cuts very deeply. And, and I, I find that I've been holding a lot of stuff. So it comes out, and I, and I had another crack up, you know. and. Uh, just the crying and stuff. It's just a release. Yeah. It's just a release for me. And, uh, I mean, I mean, hopefully you two can resolve things. And yeah, I, I'm. I, 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 I hope so. I have no I resentments. Mean, it, it didn't anyone sound like you had any sort of intention. You know, I mean, that you guys should work it out. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> but actually, I, I thought one of the more interesting things you said is is that uh, which. See, my criticism of Ryan of the workshops is he he gets to a certain level. Mm. And then he just doesn't go any further, you know. And and mm. like what I like last in the in the movie where you said, you know, I'm 
I force myself to take yeah. care of stuff. Yes, yeah, so he goes, I'm going to get through my stuff. Right. I'm going to get enlightened. And, and there was a mission in there for him to uh, to have a go at that. No, know? but I, and I think that, that I, I, for once I was really impressed because you kind of owned up to something that you do that, that you didn't see before, mm. you know, and, mm. and uh, I like that. Mm. Yeah, that, that was um, uh, a wonderful insight at, at that time. And, that, and then I felt like I relaxed a lot. After. Yeah. Because yeah. Mm. at the end, I mean, it, everyone, I mean, not just, er, er, everyone always is great at the end for polo intensive. Mm. Mm. But, uh, but then when you get the hard timers, you know, that do it constantly, the, the increments seem to get smaller, you know, because you get... I think what's actually interesting for, for Paul Lowe around this film is that, uh, from what I can gather, this has created more turmoil within the, 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 the group, if you like, than anything else. I mean, and Paul sent an email I read the other day saying, stop. I don't know if you've seen it, it's on the net now. Stop this anger. This isn't what I'm teaching. You know, we, we need to rise above this. So he started to come into this discussion. and. Uh, I think there's, what, what feels to me like there's a few people like myself who've only been doing it for a year or two, and the people that re are reactive are the people who have been doing it for a long time. Mm. And I think this film brings up that there's a different approach to the work on some level that isn't so holier than now, if you like. There's a bit more, uh, they would say disrespectful, but for me it's a bit more more than in the approach well, or something yeah, beyond fresh something I, there's a freshness that i that i like um it, it, even if it's if it's a bit more superficial even if it's a bit more superficial there's it's still fresh and uh it's a whole new energy and i i've been doing the groups for five or six years now and um and that, you know, everybody gets into their... Well, they get lulled into uh, a new conditioning. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You know, I mean, there's a new jargon, and once mm. everybody learns the jargon, then they get comfortable. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And mm. so mm. then Paul comes in and kind of shakes everybody mm. up and sort of threatens to, I don't know, have Sabine and, and Sophia come and <laughs> you guys are Write moving your or you're down. not moving <laughs> and we're going to have interviews with mm. enemy. And everybody gets all whacked out and, oh, I gotta move. And, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's kind of hilarious. Yeah. But, um, so what what goes next with the film? I mean, so Tribeca and then? Well, apparently people at R seem to be interested in distributing it. I don't... Where are you going to distribute it? Well, you know, for instance. I mean, there's a lot of nudity in there, but I guess that doesn't matter. Well, I don't know. I mean, HBO is seeing, seeing it at this very minute. They've come really? to see it, yeah. Uh, and I don't know what that, I mean, that brings up a whole other level because, like I said, I didn't do this with the intention of it going there and right. whether the people in it will want it to be seen like that because the thing is, there's a lot of ego involved, so the people in it go, I don't want to be seen like that in my vulnerability and I completely understand that because actually I'm not sure I want to be seen in my vulnerability like that, but somehow I think there's something a little bit bigger happening than our own personal stuff around this. And and I hope that the film as a whole creates a message or creates an experience for people that will move them. And I'm hoping that when everyone's calmed down a little bit, they'll see that it's actually worth a worthwhile film to get out there, considering all the stuff that's out there. This at least attempts to take people to another level. So I, 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 and I really encourage the people in it to, to have another go at letting the ego go and, and letting the film go out there and letting it do its thing. Yeah, but I don't know whether that, that will happen or whether people will want to fight me on it or, or what. And I'm, I'm open to, to nothing happening. You know? this, this, that, that might have been it. And if that's the case, then I... Well, okay. maybe if HBO picks it up, they'll give you some more money to edit it. Well, the point is, I, I'm wondering whether I would re-edit it. I'm a bit like I've done. I've done a lot to, to accommodate people. To accommodate people, and, and I mean, I always feel that great art is all about vulnerability. Well, and it's also about taking a chance, you know, and putting your head on the block. <laughs> I feel, in a way, I'm feeling like I've done my my share of this now, and 
if if the movie's not going to happen it's, and they people want to stop it, then let them stop it. I don't think I'm going to go back and re-edit it, actually. I kind of made that decision this morning because I got this person saying, well, I don't mind if you take that bit out. I don't mind if you take that bit out and not that bit, not that bit. And suddenly what have I got? I've got a load of opinions and a load of people's people ego. Wanting, you know. Yeah, 80 people wanting the bit where they look all right. And I can't do that. And I've, right. so in a way I'm, I'm done. And if the movie doesn't have any more life, then, then it doesn't, you know. So are you going to go to Harvard this summer? That's an interesting <laughs> question. And take, and will you take a camera? Uh, I will definitely not take a camera. Uh, I, I want to go to. I, I, it's 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 a tricky I mean, one I'm, because if I'm, you're going to go, then I'll go just to see what you know. I, I'm quite, all shakes <laughs> I'll bring the camera. I'm quite scared of some of the the, the the hate I've had from some people really? around this. I'll, yeah. I'll I, I know I, I'm quite, because I'm actually not a very confrontational person, and for me, it's actually it has quite affected me uh, to I have so much stuff coming. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's tough. It's, yeah. So I, I know I put myself out there, and I know it is what it is. But to go into the lion's den, I think I think I'll go the year after. I, I've because I've been on a workshop for two years editing this film. Right? I've had oh, Paul. Sure. I did a one-on-one -on -one interview with Paul, which is in the film. Right where I had some very, very profound stuff and he got right to the core of my vulnerability. And uh, so I've been looking at that every day for two years. So I've been in a workshop and I've been dealing with people in what they call sharings every day, having people's stuff come at me and my stuff. And I've done it for two years and I put my girlfriend through that as well. And she's still with you. And she's still with me. And this summer, you know, She's like, I won't go there without her, because the next experience I want to have is is with her. Right. She wasn't at the workshop. So, right, and that which is a, a whole big deal. Out, that is a whole. That's another story. But just quickly to answer your question before we come back to that, to go there now, I feel very, very vulnerable around yeah. this stuff, and I think I need a little bit more time, possibly. I don't know when the summer comes. You've got a comes, few months. <laughs> I've got a few months, but the thing is, it doesn't look like it's dying down. I hope and, you go. And every day I deal with it and it's like, do I want to go, you know, I feel like I need to build up a bit of strength maybe. Oh, one minute. we got one minute to wrap it up. Oh. So I guess we can't get into the monogamy pull up no. polyamory stuff. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I think it's well covered in the film. So, do you have a website that people can find you on? No, no. Oh, if they go to Lumina Films, I don't know whether it's dot com or Lumina L U M I N A. Google Google Lumina Films the workshop. Oh, Lumina Films the workshop. Google the workshop. Lumina L U M I N A. Thank you. I was never very good at spelling. And they will see the trailer. And you can see you can. There's a link to the trailer on there. Yeah. So, but 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 Ryan, you're happy with it, right? I really love it. Yeah. Okay. I, I, so you you you're, you're behind it 100. percent I am behind it. The 100%. main protagonists, the okay. main protagonists are behind the film. It's the people that aren't the, the stars of it that have an issue. Of course, because <laughs> they aren't the stars. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that, that, so might be, that might be a reason. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. This is uh, Molly Cheshire and Meetings with Remarkable People. Ryan Spellman and Jamie Morgan. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs>